My name is Brittany Charlton, and I'm an instructor at Harvard Medical School and the Chan School of Public Health, as well as Boston Children's Hospital. Even though oral contraceptives are over 99% effective with perfect use, almost 10% of women will become pregnant within their first year of use. And many more women will purposefully stop taking oral contraceptives when they're planning a pregnancy and conceive within just a couple of months. In both of those examples, a woman may inadvertently expose her offspring to exogenous sex hormones during the pregnancy. And previous research has shown that even after three months of stopping oral contraceptive use, uh, that oral contraceptive use can impact a woman's vitamin A and folate levels, both of which are linked to birth defects. And yet despite decades of research, we still know little about how oral contraceptives may impact the health of the offspring. So we conducted a cohort study in Denmark to investigate whether or not oral contraceptive use shortly before or during pregnancy was associated with an increased risk of major birth defects in the offspring. Along with my colleagues at the Staten Serum Institute, we used a number of Danish registries, including the prescription registry, which contains information on every drug prescription that's filled at a Danish pharmacy since 1995. Among nearly a million infants born since that registry began, just over 2% or 20,000 infants were diagnosed with a birth defect. A fifth of the women had never used oral contraceptives, while over two-thirds had used oral contraceptives, but stopped at least three months before becoming pregnant meaning that her offspring was not exposed to exogenous sex hormones. However, 8% had recently stopped using oral contraceptives, which we defined as within three months of becoming pregnant, and 1% or well over 10,000 women had used oral contraceptives after becoming pregnant. Our main finding was that there was no increased risk of a major birth defect following oral contraceptive exposure. The prevalence of birth defects was similar across all of the oral contraceptive groups, and these results were consistent even once we added in pregnancies that ended as a stillbirth or induced abortion. Our results were also consistent even once we further subdivided the birth defects into different subgroups, like looking just at limb defects. The rarity of birth defects made it difficult for us to further subdivide the birth defects. However, we were able to leverage the unique aspect of our data, particularly the fact that it was prospectively collected prescription registry data. Previous studies have primarily relied on women recalling their past oral contraceptive use, but by using the prescription registries, we completely eliminated any bias of women inaccurately recalling their past oral contraceptive use, and that also gave us ample data to explore different exposure windows. The takeaway message is that women who become pregnant either shortly after stopping oral contraceptive use or even while they're still taking them should know that that exposure is unlikely to cause her offspring to develop a birth defect. This should reassure women as well as their healthcare providers.